Facet training is nothing new, both for recreational exercise enthusiasts and athletes. Some believe that facet training allows them to get more out of their training because they don't have to deal with the gastrointestinal discomfort, while others can't fathom having the energy, energy to train efficiently without eating something beforehand. Welcome to the Workout Nerd Out. Let's talk about facet training. I'm Julio Lopez. I'm a certified strength and conditioning specialist, a certified personal trainer, and I have my master's degree in nutrition. As I started thinking about this, the first question that I had in mind was, how does facet training affect performance? Also, is there a noticeable, noticeable difference? Does it apply with all styles of training? How does it affect performance in resistance training or long steady state endurance training? And how about short high intensity interval workouts? Is there an added benefit towards possible weight loss that is seen with facet training? Also, how will, it, how will it affect one's progress in developing muscle mass? Let's take a deep dive into the world of facet training so you can make a more informed decision whether or not you decide to try it out for yourself. Like I said earlier, what I had in mind was that training performance would be the first to take a hit when facet. I know that for me, personally, I can't even concentrate, let alone have a superbly productive workout if I was to try to train without eating beforehand. In fact, as far as I can remember, it, during my days while playing baseball in high school or rowing in college, I always had to make sure that I had something to eat, at least a banana or eat an apple before I went out for practice. One thing that is for sure is that the human body is capable of going a couple days without eating and still be functional. So. While it may not necessarily be a hugely physiological hindrance, dealing with hunger can be quite difficult psychologically. When the intensity of the exercise is increased, it is likely that the psychological obstacle is increased substantially for some. In this case, I would be comfortable with recommending folks that struggle with the psychological hindrance caused by hunger to opt out of high intensity faster training. As for low, inten low intensity facet training, this may be more doable for some, but still others might not be able to get over the psychological obstacle caused by hunger. In Narita 2018, out of a meta-analysis of 46 studies that had to do with exercise performance and facet training, what their findings uncovered was that there was only a minimal difference in performance with short aerobic exercise. In other words, if you are only planning on running a mile or two, first thing in the morning, skipping out on eating before you head out might not make a giant difference. According to Aird, as the exercise duration and intensity was increased, the performance levels exhibited by the facet groups increasingly waned in comparison with the fed groups. So, according to the meta-analysis, if you wanted to run uh, 10 miles in search of a new PR, your time is probably going to be better when you have your run after you have something to eat. Interestingly, since most individuals that adopt facet training are typically those that train in the first thing in the morning, this is a no-brainer because fasting for a couple hours is way easier to do while sleeping than when a person is awake. Papadakis et al. 2021 found that test subjects who were sleep deprived and fasted, getting three to three and a half hours of sleep, did not have their performance doing high intensity interval ex exercises substantially drop compared to the group that got a full night's rest and fasted. According to Papadakis, the sleep-deprived fasted group was found to utilize a higher percentage of fat as an energy source than the fasted group that got adequate sleep. Both groups exhibited similar VO2 max readings as well. However, the study really has to be taken with a grain of salt for a couple reasons. First off, I think everyone can agree that being sleep deprived for a long period of time is not ideal for most people. While these individuals that were sleep de deprived did not exhibit any disadvantages, this study only lasted for seven days. Therefore, had this study been extended out to, let's say, six months or even over a year, things would have likely have been very different. And yeah, if you're not very familiar with looking at studies, seven days is really short. Another glaring weakness that has to be cited is the fact that it only had 15 participants in the study. Again, this isn't the most ideal, nevertheless, 
What we can gain from this study is that if a person that likes facet training was to have trouble sleeping for a couple nights, progress to better health might not be hurt too bad. But if any of you have trouble sleeping for more than a couple weeks, seeing your doctor about it is probably the best thing for you. In my opinion, people looking to maximize their training performance might be less inclined to ab adopt doing it while facet. The more popular reason why facet training is adopted has more to do with weight loss. So let's take a look at that. As mentioned earlier, Papadakis found that the body may use a larger percentage of fat as its energy source, even at high intensity, when training while facet. One thing that we already know is that at rest and at very low intensity, fat is a primary energy source. A steady walk also uses more fat than carbohydrates as its main ener energy source. For this reason, we see bodybuilders promoting walking as the essential form of cardio to lose fat and to preserve muscle mass. In a review by Wallace and Gonzalez 2018, they found that a single bout of facet training induced a higher percentage of fat used as an energy source during training. As with other studies, facet training resulted in a lower caloric consumption in a 24-hour period. However, when it came to seeking a long-term benefit from facet training, fat loss and overall weight loss was not much different compared to those that trained while fed. According to Franton et al. 2021, where it was a meta-analysis of 23 studies where the researchers compared food intake, hunger, gastrointestinal hormone release, and energy expenditure between test subjects that trained while fasted versus those that were fed, the researchers found that fasted training exhibited lower food consumption throughout the day. Since the goal for successful weight loss is caloric deficit, this may sound like a win for fasted training because fewer calories are consumed. However, they also found that facet training test subjects is exhibited lower energy expenditure. My initial assumption for the lower energy expenditure was that it might have been due to decreases in exercise performance, but according to Frabton's meta-analysis, there was no indication of this being the case. In fact, the studies they looked at indicated perceived exertion and exercise enjoyment was the same for both facet and fed test groups. Instead, researchers believed that the lower energy expenditure was due to decreased diet-induced thermogenesis. Schoenfeld et al. 2014 compared body composition changes between facet and fed aerobic training, and again, researchers found that the facet training group consumed fewer calories throughout the day but the fat loss between both groups was fairly similar. Researchers compared fat mass loss, overall weight loss, changes in fat-free mass, and BMI, but found no significant difference. Much like Franting, Schoenfeld theorizes that even though fewer calories are consumed by the facet group, the thermic effect of food might have contributed to evening out the amount of fat loss between both the facet and the fed groups. Ultimately, while the difference in weight loss between being fed or fasted when working out is relatively the same, and performance in more time-consuming training may dip more while fasted, I believe that there is still some value in fasted training. Some of you may be very sensitive to gastrointestinal discomfort, and if you feel that you can get a much better workout while fasted, I would be in the wrong if I tried convincing you to eat before training. But, if you would like to train with a higher intensity, maybe eating something that is easily digestible a couple hours before training might work. With the majority of the studies about fasted training, one thing that they all can agree on is that more research is still needed. I hope this video helped clarify some of the questions you might have had about fasted training. But, if you have some more, leave a comment below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more fitness and nutrition tips.